What is up and is going on guys, Simpsy here and welcome back to some more Total War Tiller. We are playing as the Western Roman Empire. So first things first, I want to split the first half of the episode up into diplomacy and construction and public order. Now, sometimes, you believe me or not, watching videos you don't really comprehend what's going on, you don't really see everything. So I'm just going to quickly recap a few things before we get into the episode. So like I said, let's go into diplomacy, so let's have a look at the strategical overview now. Now, we've got to go into uh, diplomatic status. So, um, enemy-wise, we'll start off on our eastern front. We have the Ostrogoths, who are pretty well, like, destroyed. They're just basically raiding in uh, Macedonia. Now, we still got the Visigoths, who are not at war with. But um, these guys, uh, this Hunnic horde, they're very much like the, the Huns themselves. They've declared war on me, so we've got to deal with them in my lands. The Quidaeans... Now, they did have an army around about here, just like floating about. We were at war with them for quite a bit. They sacked and raised most of my settlements here. Well, while they were pushing down south, I pushed up here, if you guys can remember, and I subjugated them, so hopefully we don't have to worry about them. Um, to the north, we've still got the Saxons and the Jutes. Um, wow. So, uh, let's have a look at Germania before... Um, actually, before we zoom in and have a look on... Uh, sorry, not Germania, Britain. Africa-wise, um, let's have a look, shall we? So, the Germantians have finally taken a settlement here, so we're going to have to watch out for Carthage, um, of course. Now, let's have a look up at Britain. Britain is basically in flames. Um, the actual British here, um, the Britons have taken that. Roman rebels have that. Um, the Caledonians are sacking and pillaging and come to London, so we've lost Londinium, the, who are these guys, the Caledonians, uh, Linden is not attacked, but the Picts and the Britons are fighting over Eboricum and also the Ebedanians, so, yeah, the Saxons also have an army here, but the Franks have been beating them back quite heavily in my lands. So, I currently have two armies here. We're going to be attacking them in today's episode. I also have an army here with my heir who's going to be pushing against the the Visigoths who don't have a very big army, but they're very, getting way too close to Italy. My emperor is here recruiting some more cohorts, and they're the army. So, once I subjugated them... Oh, they still have a full stack, but uh, they're not particularly happy with me still. So, now that that's done, that's basically what's happening in the world. Let's have a look at the strategic overview and have a look at the public order uh, in our empire. So, like I said, I, it's, it's, gotten, it's gotten tremendously better. I did say I wanted to start off with Italy and try to sort of spread it out a bit here. Now, it's kind of red on this point because there's just so many raids and sacks and stuff. So, and uh, sinnings, I have most of my military force over here. I don't really want to pump too much money because basically what I've been doing is just building... Um, uh, chapels and stuff just to get the public order up and stuff. So, seeing as we have a military, there's no point of putting um, public order stuff because this is going to get sacked and raided. And we have a really, a really big military force, so we'll start focusing on that later. So, um, at the moment, we're just trying to focus on getting Spain good because it is slowly, like this is current and this is predicted. So, basically, I don't want to focus on northern France because once the British frontier falls, I'm not going to. Um, destroy the because you can like abandon settlements. I think you get like a thousand, but I'd rather just them like fight it out and constantly sack it and do whatever to Britain. Um, just buying myself time to get rid of these tribes. We can always retake Britain and very much in the same boat as Africa. Um, yeah, but we want to focus on. I want to like try and solidify. Like I said, I wanted to start it Italy to try get my my public order and economy back. And I think we're working up quite well. So we're going to focus on Spain now. Now, while I say that, if we have a look at my my faction overview in the governors, I've actually taken all my governors out of Italy and uh, Sicily and Corallus and whatnot. So I'm going to once they've been uh, like see here there, they're getting out. We're going to put them in Spain and hopefully we can retake. The public order in Spain, because Spain is just a powerhouse of economy. Seeing Novo, Novo Carthago, Carvo, Car <laughs> it's usually Nova Carthago, but it's Carthago Nova in this game is just a powerhouse for us. Now, there is a army here from the Desert Scorpions, so we're going to have to watch out for them, and we might be being besieged at Carthage. So, what we're going to focus on now is eliminating the Visigoths, keeping an eye 
on the Quidaeans and the Ostrogoths, as you see here, they're really quite battered. We battered them quite back, and now they're pushed into the Eastern Roman Empire's lands. Also need to keep a mind over the Saxons and the Picts, the Caledonians and the Britons pushing into uh, northern France. It will be only a matter of time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push upon this army here. Now it's very quite weak to be honest of it. To be honest, you'd think they'll have more cavalry. They do have quite a quite a, a fair amount, six units. But we have an army here and we have another full stack here and we have another army pushing across. Have, let's have a look at the family tree because I didn't know I didn't really know if I talked about it that much in the first couple of episodes as much as like my Huns because that family tree is just immense at the moment. So we have our Emperor Flavius Honorus Honorus Augustus who has a bastard daughter and he has a do he has, has an adopted brother, um, not a biological brother. So there's him and he has a daughter. Um, so we do need to marry her off at some point. We will, but she just needs to get up her influence. We can't actually arrange a marriage. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we can't arrange on her behalf either. So we just need to wait, and uh, hopefully time will tell. Let's hope that he does have a, a son at some point. He's got a bastard daughter. Let's have a look at his wife, actually. Positive personal influence, positive authority. So what we're going to do now is we're going we're to push these guys out of our lands. We should be able to beat them. We have a fair amount of cohorts. Um, let's actually have a look at the technology that we're researching. <clears throat> We're researching that, and probably we'll go with uh, this one next once we save a little bit of money, because we get Legos, and we unlock a lot of artillery and skirmishes and stuff. Objectives, if you guys are curious what the minor objectives are, survive until the following spring date, 425, we still haven't hit 400 yet, control 80 settlements, we control 102, maintain these provinces, research 10 technologies, produce the following amounts, which we are... Uh, produce the following amount of all. Oh, yes, so we're really and actually we're we're basically on bar with the maintained total units. So that's good. So basically, we just need to survive until the spring and keep up with the units, which is fantastic. So we're doing well on this campaign so far. Once we get rid of these hordes, we might actually make a, make a, a push. So hopefully that didn't bore you. I basically just recapped what is going on and what my plans are as well. So, we're going to attack these guys now, and hopefully have a, a rather good victory on our hands, because it definitely should be a good battle. If you have a look here. Let's fight this one on the battle map. So guys, if you are enjoying this Total War Attila Western Roman Empire campaign, remember to leave a like. I'd really much appreciate it. I do put a lot of effort into these videos, and a simple like really does go a long way. So they have four lots of uh, spearmen. So this is a Hunnic faction, so... As you if you've seen in my Huns campaign, the spearmen aren't the best. Um, I wouldn't imagine their swordsmen would be either. They do have four lots of archers, which we're going to have to watch out for. Thank God they don't have any horse archers, because they just absolutely tear through units. Two lots of slingers. They do have a fair amount of cavalry, but uh, hopefully my my own spearmen will be able to deal with them. My cohorts should be able to just absolutely push through their spearmen. And we also have a thousand reinforcements, and we also have another army. Uh, closer to the Vis Visigoths, just on the other side of the Swiss Alps, probably more near Austria, I would say. But, uh, yeah, so once we get rid of the tribes in our lands, we're going to try regroup. I don't know if we should try push out the units. I don't know who we should fight first. Like, do we try to retake Africa or Britannia? I'm probably thinking of too far ahead because we've still got the Saxons. There's a lot more enemies to the north of uh, France and Britain, but we could be able, we w we could actually defeat the nomadic tribes in Northern Africa, and then also there's a bit of a buffer between that and the Eastern Roman Empire. But obviously, we're going to lose so much attrition in the desert. So I honestly don't know if it'll be worth it or not. So um, where are my units being deployed on this side of the hill? So what we're going to do here is, looks like they've taken the high ground, sort of. I'm going to put my cohorts, and we also have these light axemen. I want to try charge them as much as possible. Get in there, get stuck in, and then hopefully come off as victors. So we'll put my spearmen on the flanks. Um, they don't actually have that many, so we'll put two here. We'll put my skirmishers just behind. 
and we'll put the cavalry just behind my units just in case there's a flanking maneuver i don't really want to flank with them too much because they are just gonna absolutely tear through us we'll group this and we'll group this the front line can basically charge up we could actually try like funnel it here And we also have our reinforcements coming in. Once I've just given the orders, I will double check the deployment on this. Okay, pop you there. I don't want them to be running just yet. So where are the units being deployed? Okay, on the hill here. This should be a really good advantage for us. So what I want to do is get everyone. And we'll try get them down as quickly as possible. Who else is on the hill? The general unit and the cavalry. Just like pop them there. I do want these guys to run however. Oh wow, it's the huts over there. <laughs> it's a little bit foggy, but uh, it, it should do. It, it should do. Couple of barbarians there. <laughs> I'm hoping the line isn't too thin. That's probably something what I'm worried about. Obviously, the Roman cohorts, we might have to reform that up. I'm not liking how thin that is. But also, you don't want to be too thin because if the archers just will tear through you as well. Okay. Or maybe I should just try reform. I think coming down from this part of the hill should help. They have a lot of their cavalry there, and we have a heavy amount of spearmen on this flank. So we should be able to combat with theirs. We have a he we've got three lots of spearmen instead of two on that side. Okay, let's just start speeding this up now. Because I don't want to run and then get my troops absolutely knackered. But also, for continuity's sake, I don't particularly want to not waste your time. But I don't want the video to be too boring either. So they're nearly in position there. Once they get into position, we'll give them a little bit of a breather. But I want my spearmen on this flank to just, just pretty much charge them. We'll just form them there. Once everyone gets into position, I might just get the last lot to run into their positions. Okay, so they're not actually in range, which is good. So I think, seeing as we don't have any archers, we might as well just go for a head-on charge. So what have they got? They've got their spearmen here, so I want my... Swordsmen just to basically hit their swordsmen as hard as possible. I think brute force is going to help us in this a lot more. Um, and then get my spearmen to deal with their cavalry on this side. Yeah, just basically go for those three lots of cavalry. Okay, I'm going to keep my general back here with their skirmishes. I could push the skirmishes in. I guess I don't see why not, but I just don't want to lose too many casualties. I forget that this... Is that general unit on a cavalry? No, he's not on a cavalry unit. Okay. So let's halt. Uh, sorry, let's play. I'm going to leave my cavalry in reserve, however. Did I give orders to this? No, I didn't give orders to these spear units. And we'll push up here. I guess I might just leave my cavalry to defend my general there. I could even push my general on this flank over here. Just to help. But we're going to engage them now. Hopefully this barbarian, this is the mercenary unit, doesn't flank. Uh, sorry, doesn't route because it's just so small. So what are they trying to do here? They're going to charge their spearmen at that cavalry unit to break it. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, but... 
Yeah, if we can get these axemen just to hold them there, my my uh, spearmen's just gonna come in and carve them up. Okay, we're gonna get my. Are they even in range? No, we're gonna have to put them up here a bit more. And yeah, put the you the here battle. more. This is a shameful display. Okay, so my swordsman, and look at this, my. Uh, I might move my cavalry up. Actually, we're gonna need them to run down their skirmishes. Because I just realised we're gonna lose so many because we're getting hit from behind with these spearmen. But my spearmen should be able to route them quite quickly. Okay, we're in range. Let's hit their archers. My, okay, so they've actually charged their cavalry in, so my spearmen here should have a field day, if we're lucky. The amount of just units we're going to be flanking, we're going to get behind them now, because we're already in a tremendous position. Okay, we'll get my cavalry to run down their archers, that cavalry unit's broken. And I want my skirmishers to pick a... An archer unit each. I don't think you should focus on the one. Holy shit, we just routed them here. Okay, spearmen, even though you're probably not the best, get in there. Okay, they're going to route them. I'm going to get this spear unit to hit these guys. Okay. Holy fuck. And my cohort should be able to route them completely. Okay, that cavalry's done its job. And now I just want you to deploy and utterly surround these guys. Um, okay, where were these? We could even get them to hit this. This is going to be absolutely detrimental. They're running uphill into skirmishes. If we can get our shot off first. Oh, we defeated the whole unit. Oh my god, look at that. Okay, how are my cavalry doing? I don't want them to be, like, attacked by their cavalry because there's going to be absolutely minced, which I think they are getting. Okay, so they've routed now completely. We'll swing back around directly into our spearmen, so hopefully we'll be able to get, we'll be able to get theirs. Holy shit. So, that's tricked them enough, hopefully. Okay, so what is left in the field? Their lot of cavalry. Okay, so basically, just pick a unit and try run them down. There shouldn't be that much more just in there. Okay, I think we've won the battle there. Definitely end it straight away. Decisive victory. Regular soldier, we got the achievement. So we deployed 3,505. We lost 442 on the battle map. And, uh... Ah, Shaka. Deployed 2,639 and he lost 1,799. That was a solid victory. We lost under six... I was expected to be, honestly, probably lose about half of what they deployed, but... We... At, we that was superb tactics. We neutralized their cavalry, that was probably the main threat. And uh, their spearmen and those like average sword units wouldn't stand a chance. So, we're going to end the episode here guys while loading back. Thank you very much for watching if you watched all the way through. I really do appreciate it. Remember to leave a like to support this series and my channel. And remember to above all go out and have a fantastic resty day after you watch this video. My name has been Simsy. And, uh, oh hang on, we might be able to load into it. Depending on how long it takes. We'll just see. Deploying on a hill is always a good idea. Being uphill gives your troops, uh, troops a melee advantage. And climbing it will tire the enemy. Shooting down helps too. Ah, I didn't know that, Total War. Thank you. <laughs> As the twig is bent, the tree inclines. As the twig is bent, the tree inclines. Okay, that's a very... Specific, I don't poet. I don't. I don't really get it, but well, I do. But, um, is it worthy to be in Total War Attila? Maybe not. Now we could kill them, but um, this is their last army. There are oh, there are a few remaining though. So should we take on warriors just so we can get the replenishments? Probably a good idea. So we'll take on warriors, and uh, they're basically Advance. running away now. Now I just want to do a save just in case we. 
Oh, hang on a minute. I want to get to a save. Just in case we get a crash. Which, um, has been plaguing me in my Danes campaign, if you guys have been watching that. So hopefully, in this auto resolve, we'll be able to kill the last of this faction. So we'll just go with a balanced. And then that's one horde that bites the dust. Hopefully, the only other hordes we have to face are, um... Oh, look. Gabe Newell. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who that is. Someone trying to be funny. But we defeated, um, the... I don't know how to say that. Well, that says Ezgi. So it would be i -E -E or the e -E -E. <laughs> No, but we defeated them. And they're no longer a threat. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to focus on the Visigoths. Obviously, the Ostrogoths. Um, we're going to have to be very wef, wef, um, wef, wef, oh my god, very wet, I can't, I don't know why I can't say that word, <sighs> very wary <laughs> of the Saxons, and obviously the, the Britons, the Picts, the Caledonians, like all the British tribes there, and the Africans, who are pushing near to Carthage, and they actually just have an army here, which is just sort of raiding, but so hopefully, in the next episode, we'll be fighting the Visigoths with one of these armies. And let's just hope the Quidaeans don't betray us. Mind you, we did subjugate them and took their homeland. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. My objective probably is to get rid of the tribes in my lands. Shore up my borders, get my public order on track. Um, I might like sit a bit a full stack in the north just to protect... Um, just to protect... Northern France, it would be easier, like I said, um, it would be easier probably getting rid of the African tribes, sending there's one, uh, one settlement there, one settlement there, uh, one, two, so we'd be able to, like, if we got rid of all those settlements, there's nothing to the east of us, our eastern border would be protected, um, because, or unless the eastern Roman Empire fell, but I think they're doing pretty well, um, they haven't lost a settlement left, oh yeah, they've lost, uh, Marconopolis. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Or should we just try and get rid of the Saxons and actually retake Britannia? It's going to be a task, but uh, this empire is huge, so hopefully we have a couple more armies. So I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. My name has been Simsy, and goodbye.